YouTube, it's Brian Phillips again. I know it's been a long time, like a week. And some of you guys are getting really ticked off because I just keep reviewing these like cars and chainsaws and trees. But anyway, you haven't seen those yet, but you will. <laughs> so I, I said I have to review something that might possibly fly. So let's look at this garbage bag that just showed up on my doorstep. It's not nearly as big as some packages I've been reviewing lately. Um, and I have to admit, I already ripped the sack, which is awkward. What is this thing? It's an actual airplane. So it's kind of a kind of boring packaging. That one looks better. That looks cooler. Yeah. So guys, this is a P fifty one. This is this is a an E A E A Chinese. E I think it's supposed to be e Sheen, like e machine. Yeah, e like yeah, machine. Not sure. uh, I don't know. I have trouble with some of these <laughs> Chinese names. They, we they should not guess. Don't translate well, but it's okay because, like, honestly, some of these little Chinese planes are pretty awesome. And honestly, the reason for the review of this right now is because people are probably shopping right now, and this thing is like, you could actually get this as a gift because it's not like. $450. <laughs> I mean, if you're spending $450, I need to be on your gift list. Yes, you do. The other thing too is, guys, look at this package. It's not squished, which is no. nice. And to be perfectly honest, when you get stuff from overseas, every once in a while you'll get an epic fail. And there's nothing worse than wrapping a gift and having some kid that's like almost 40 years old <laughs> open it and see him cry on Christmas morning. It's really, it's, awful. it's really sad. The Yashin? Is that what it is? I don't know. Yashin? E -A -Shin? I don't know. Maybe it's just Chinese. Chinese. China. I don't know. It looks really cool from the top. Look at this, guys. This oh. is a ready to fly. It is a ready to fly P51. Let's cut it open. I like this packaging. It's almost like Horizon quality packaging. It of is. Of course, it's not Horizon quality packaging because it's not Horizon quality plane, which means it also costs. Less than a third. Oh, it's pretty. Oh man, without the gear on there, it's gorgeous. Look at this thing. Let's show the people at home. Camera crew, it feels light. The quality of finish is definitely not great. Um, you can see the dimpling a little bit. The canopy should go down quite a bit further. You could fix that with some black paint. The wheel's a little bit large, but it's pretty cool. Like it actually looks good. It's light, see? Feel it, camera crew. See, it's not heavy. No. Which is nice. Light planes fly slower if you want. And you're like, well, I want my plane to go fast. Well, you have no flying very long. <laughs> when they fly slow, that means they fly good. Because you can fly fast with anything you put a bigger motor in. What the heck? It's got a steering wheel. <laughs> whoa, whoa. I love those things, actually. Those things are awesome for wheels, guys. Look at that. That's a perfect wheel. I know. You trim yeah. that sucker down and you've got a perfect, extremely light. This thing probably weighs less than a gram. Add it to your box of garbage. Yeah. Yeah. I got a lot of garbage boxes. <laughs> um, whoa! Spare prop. Are you kidding me? Look at this. This is awesome. Oh. It comes with a spare prop and spinner. Funny story time, guys. Flying the Carbon Z Cub yesterday, the 16 inch propeller and spinner come, came off of the plane. It's okay, I did see planted, it was no big deal, but it did damage the cowling, so I got call right like This is pretty cool stuff. And this is a 130 by 70, so it's a 130X70. That means it's 130 uh, millimeters, right? Yeah, millimeters yeah. by 70 millimeters worth of pitch, which means that it will go 70 millimeters in a full rotation. And it looks like there's a Phillips screw that's down at the bottom of this. Okay, so the Phillips screw can be unscrewed and then the spinner would come off, which guys, that is huge. You get this for a kid, he crashes it, he's crying, he's 36 years old. It's very embarrassing for everybody. If you could fix it then. Okay, this is a radio that comes with it. There's no spring return on the throttle. Spring return on this. This is a mode two, I hope, uh, which means that'd be elevator and then ailerons, which rolls the plane, and then this would be rudder, and this would be throttle. And yes, this is a four channel plane. It's got one for the ailerons, or two, in no particular order. You got throttle, 
one, two ailerons, three elevator, and four rudders. That's four channels. Okay, no retractable landing gear, unless you would add it later, which you'd be crazy to do that on a plane like this. It does come with landing gear. They are appropriately small and foam. Look at this, guys. Show them a close-up of that. They are. Yeah, they're foam. That's awesome, mm. actually. I like that. I actually prefer that to some of the Horizon stuff. And look how that goes in there. That's so nice. I really like the way that that works because they're super light, guys. Sometimes landing gear are really heavy. And you want landing gear to look scale if you're like me, but you're willing to compromise for performance. Um, especially since they're fixed gear. Sometimes the fixed gear on these little planes, these ultra micro planes, um, they're hard to get off and you end up ripping them out of the wing. So that's been my experience. So it comes with a charger, adapter. Oh, whoa, look at this. It comes with another spinner adapter, are you kidding me? Man, they're like planning on us crashing this thing. <laughs> so this thing receives a Phillips screw. The spinner uh, evidently clips into these three. And then of course the propeller slides down and around the shaft. So you would slip that onto the propeller shaft or onto the motor shaft. Oh, that's how you would run it. Oh wait, you know what? I lied. I lied, guys. That must be a tool that's used to separate some of this stuff. I'm not sure how all that works. Mm. Oh, I figured it out. That's how this holds onto the motor. That Just is like so that. cool. So it's like a quick detach. Hmm. Okay, sorry guys. Keep these for wheels. This is gonna take some batteries. Ready to fly planes from China sometimes are a little bit deceiving because they don't actually come ready to fly. In this case, it's gonna come mostly ready to fly because you need the four double A's or whatever goes in the transmitter and we'll show you that here in just a second. But then looks, folks. Look at this, folks. Oh yeah, buddy. It comes with a 3.7 volt at 350 milliamp hour 1S pack, meaning one cell in series. That's why it's S and not C. If you're new to the LiPo world, this is a lithium polymer pack. This is the most dangerous part of the equation and it's very small, so it's not very dangerous. So let's put it in your carpet and you leave it in a tenant and it's puffed up to twice its size and it catches on fire and burns your house down and everybody dies. Don't do that. It'll ruin your day. Comes with screws. Comes with a screwdriver. Amazing, miracle, three screws. There's an extra sack. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to charge this. I know you guys are like, Brian, why do you always spend so much time on charging? Because let me tell you something, kids. When you're at home, and when I say kids, I mean the other 36-year-old adult men that act all excited about stuff like this. You need to charge your batteries, okay? Just get over it. It's part of life, okay? Straighten the cable. This is a USB, regular standard USB. It says uh, 4.2 volts is what it says. That's stupid because that's the nominal charge. When these things are fully charged, they're at 4.2 volts DC. When they're discharged, they're somewhere between 3.6 and three would be like the very bottom. If it goes below that, it's dead, okay? LiPo's only use that top range. So you see this little thing? This is called a low C connector. It's kind of flat and it's got like a flat wide pin for the positive and negative. They work a little bit better than the micro HXT connectors. And you just gotta be a little bit careful because just like any other charging, you gotta make sure you get your polarity right and they're keyed so you can't easily put them in wrong, but if you get really crazy with it, you can probably get it to go. So we're gonna start charging this and we are gonna get some double A's. Let's see how many we need. Oh, they taped it shut, that's interesting. I wonder why they did that. Uh-oh, come on, there it is. <gasps> what? Oh, it's like Christmas in July, except it's not July and it's not Christmas. Look, I got three of these batteries. That's what crazy. is going on? Somebody really likes me. I think it may have come with three, and that's awesome because, like, I didn't know this game. Hey, with three. look on the side of the box. Three there's... batteries included with the red dots. So it depends on. So evidently, you can get it with one, two, or three. Hmm. That's awesome, guys. I didn't know it came with three packs. That is super nice because I have a lot of airplanes. Let's show them our cup collection real quick. Our cup collection. Come on into the office. Yeah, it's folks. not in our kitchen, amazingly. We have some more airplanes here. We have a lot of airplanes in the basement. This is just a small collection. And then some helicopters. And then inside of here, we have our cups full of delicious drink. Ooh, <laughs> that looks good. These things use similar size packs. And the reason I'm so excited is because I love flying these things and it's fun and you can charge them up and just fly and 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 fly. Okay. 
We're gonna pause it, we'll get the charger set up and come right back. Okay, so we got the transmitter, we got some uh, double A's, and the double A's go in here really obviously. You basically take the flat side, if you don't know, it goes up against the spring, and then the little bump side goes the opposite. So it is labeled in here, let's show the people at home. It's very simple, it's not gonna confuse anybody too bad. Um, one thing I do like about these Chinese radios is that they don't have the uh, safety screws, which drive me nuts. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. In this case, it doesn't. Um, I know if a kid were to put one of those down, it would be bad, but uh, you know, I guess just don't do that. You outgrew that at least, luckily. Huh. You outgrew the eating I, batteries. I, I got over that after yep. the first year or four. <laughs> so you see these? They got a bend on them, okay? They are not the same. One is left and one is right, okay? You'll figure it out really quick is there's a hole down here that you slip that into and it is a little bit challenging because you gotta kind of wiggle it a little bit and then it falls kind of into that, that hole. The one thing I'm struggling with is getting it to snap all the way down in there. See like that side, I finally kind of got the perfect angle to where it would snap down in there without kind of squishing the wing. So you have to just work out a little bit. And then you got the landing gear on. It's very simple. And just make sure your batteries are in right. You should see flashing light. Okay, so I'm gonna turn that back off for now. And then we've got these little batteries. I found a little, this is, this is just a USB uh, charger for an ASUS tablet. It says the output is 5.2 volts at 1.35 amps, but this doesn't actually tell you what it takes for an input, um, meaning the input on this side. So we're just gonna throw a caution in the wind and assume it works because it does not suggest anything on the actual package. So we're going to charge this battery. Just find an outlet like this outlet right here. Obviously, if you're in some other country, you're going to have a different outlet. Don't blame me. <laughs> red lights on. When the red light shuts off, I'm assuming it'll be done or it'll flash or something different will happen. Um, let's show the people at home how to test these. Uh, if you have one of these things, you can, sometimes you can test the voltage on these things. Um, the low C connector has a different size pin on these little voltage testers. So you just look for the negative and you line it up with the black. I don't know if it'll reach. Yeah, it does, look. So one cell and all is 3.89. So this would be what I would consider to be a storage mode, okay? So when this thing is charged, if you have one of these little voltage testers, which are dirt cheap, you can get them anywhere. Um, I think I spent like two or three bucks on them and you can set by pressing this little dip switch Most people don't realize there's even a dip switch on it. You can change the voltage where it will alarm Obviously in this application, we're not going to be using a voltage alarm that weighs twice as much as the battery or half as much as the battery or the same as much as the battery But it's very nice when you're testing brand new batteries to see if they're working or what voltage they're at You remember how I said earlier 4.2 volts is actually the operating um, voltage when you want to run a, a LiPo. Okay, so 3.88. So these are in storage mode right now, which is good. The chemistry is the most stable at that point. So I got the landing gear installed. Um, no steerable tail gear, which is a bummer because that basically means, you see how it's kind of not straight? When you give this throttle, it's going to want to roll at an angle. So you're going to want to try to straighten that as much as you can. And you see how that's wanting to bend the foam? That's not so good either. So the biggest thing is you want to get off the ground like that first and that will prevent the tail wheel from giving you problems. But I'm going to show you another little trick that will work. If you really want this to have a steerable nose gear or steerable tail gear in this case, you could take out the tail gear and you could just stick it into the tail and then you would be able to control this on the ground. But we're not going to get too married to that right now because this looks a little bit more scale this way. I am, however, gonna grab this piece right here down at the bottom with needle nose, and I'm just gonna bend this a little teeny bit, okay? So that'll get us a little bit closer to square, and just make sure it rolls straight. See how that's going kind of straight? It's not even perfect, but it was a lot worse before. That doesn't seem like a big deal until you go to take off, and then the thing like tracks off into the side of your sidewalk or whatever. Spend the extra couple seconds and do this, it'll, it'll pay dividends. Or just hand launch it, you can hand launch a plane like this. Whoops. Okay, 
So we're good there. Mm -hmm. That's it's close as it needs to be. And like I said, if you guys are going to use this, if this is going to be your mainstay aircraft, just take that take that tail gear out and cut a new slot with an X-Acto knife and slide it in there. Put a little bit of CA, and then you can do steer ball nose gear or tail gear. All right, so power's on. I want to get another battery that's going to be charged so we can test this thing quick. And the weather outside is not real great, mm -hmm. but we could still probably try it and see how it does. So let's pause and we'll get another battery that's charged. All right, so we got a, a really quick tip that's going to save you some trouble later. Uh, these new batteries that came with this airplane, they're 350 milliamp hours. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry guys, I think it might be 360. Is that 360? I thought it was 350, I apologize. Oh, maybe it is, it is 360. 360. So I'm just going right to write through. P51 on here. And then basically I can remember where they came from in the vintage of the packs in case I have one that's maybe bad or whatever. Um, these batteries don't last forever. And as you can see from this box of goodies, I've got a million of these chargers with dual low C connectors, which is nice because I can charge a couple of them at a time. But I'll show you one other option for charging. Um, you obviously don't have to do it this way. This is just another option. In my case, I use these balance chargers to charge my bigger packs, like the 6S packs is what I've been using on the smaller, or some of my bigger planes. Um, you, can, you can use, I built this connector like this, and since this has nothing hooked to it, it's perfectly safe. You can, you can build them with a female plug. So I'm just gonna go red to red. This is a low C style connector. You can see how it's kind of flat and wide, but if it's perfectly, that's because I, I built it to fit perfectly. And once you get that in there, just make sure your polarity is right. Normally, you would just use a low C connector, and it would be a lot easier. Oops. Sorry, guys. So, of course, I'll just build female ends off of here and have, like, three or four plugs. That's one option. But then I plug this into the, the discharge port on the middle there. And you can go into your LiPo battery. And then you can do LiPo charge or you can do balance charge, it doesn't matter because it's a 1S. So this is a 360 milliamp, so you wanna ch change that. You wanna change that to uh, three or four would be fine, 0.4 amps. Can you give them just a mm -hmm. little bit closer shot so they can see? In my case, I charge at half of a C, which means like about half of the rating of the pack, and then one cell. So we're gonna press start. And then there it goes. So now it's charging at 0.2 amps and that's the charge voltage. And then you can normally hit this and you'll see all the cells, but I'm not in balance mode, I'm just in LiPo mode. Okay, so we'll walk back to the charge screen so you can see the timer running. And it's same on a lot of these balance chargers, they all have really similar firmware. So they're gonna operate the same way. And then I'll show you on another charger because there's nothing worse than having a plane that you want to fly and then not having batteries charged. So this one has the low C connectors. This one came with the little airliners. And uh, generally speaking, if you're not sure if the thing is gonna damage your plane, don't use it. Um, there is a limit to how fast you can charge these things, but that's that's the big thing, is you wanna make sure that it doesn't charge your, cell, your, your little LiPo too fast. Um, generally speaking, these little chargers are not going to charge them too fast. What's going to happen is you'll put too much voltage out with this and you'll just basically damage the circuit. So we'll show you how this one works too. Plugs in, there's a red light comes on and the red light will eventually go to a, a not being on. So that all being understood, we have a bunch of batteries. Let's plug in any one of these batteries. It's one S. Um, these just have the same style of connector, which is a low C connector. So if you're searching for other batteries, of course you can buy batteries um, from Banggood in this case, or you can buy them from whoever you bought the plane from. And sometimes you just have to buy another plane to get more batteries, which is really annoying. This, this is from the Y20, which is one of the airliners that Banggood uh, sent. And this is 300 milliamp hour, so it's a little bit smaller. Uh, this one's also 300 milliamp hour from the 737. This one is 300 milliamp hours. It looks like that's kind of the thing, is the 300 milliamp hours. There's a 500 milliamp hour. This one is from the 787. That's a 300 milliamp hour, but they're all, you'll notice they're a little bit different size and shape. So that's usually what I do is this is from the 380. 
and it is also 300 milliamp hours. So it looks like I'm gonna strike out on getting one that's exactly the same size. This one's 300 milliamp hour from the, the C17. So what we're gonna have to do, and then the rest are, are big. This one's also 500, and this one's 700 milliamp hour. Um, I forget what that's from. I think it was from one of the helis. So, um, so if people have batteries sitting around, you want to use one that's smaller instead of bigger. If you're trying to find, if you're trying to use a battery else. that you want to fly this plane in, um, 300 milliamp hours is the amount of time it's going to run. That's telling you it's going to it's going to run for uh, 0.3 amps per hour for an hour. Okay. That's what milliamp hours means. It's a, it's a time over voltage understanding, okay? So like this, this cell is 700 milliamp hours, but it's still 3.7 volts. So it's the same voltage, it's still a LiPo, it's a 1S pack, okay? So you have the same amount of power, you just have it for a lot longer time on this, which means it's bigger, it's heavier. And ironically enough, that 700 will probably fit in here uh, just a little bit too big. The 500 will, I bet, Nope, just a little bit too big. This is a 2S pack, so you would not use that. You'd more than likely burn up the motor. Um, so that's why you gotta watch out for that, guys, at home. This is a 300 milliamp hour from the 380. It looks like that'll fit in there just fine. It's gonna be a little bit tight getting the door shut because the door has to close shut and the wire's sticking out the end. This one sticks out of the side of the pack a little bit more, so we can use that one. And for the sake of testing it while the others charge, we'll just go ahead and use this. So this is kind of a break from normal RC etiquette, if you will. Uh, we are going to plug in the battery on the airplane first. And yes, my videos get a little wordy, but a lot of this stuff people don't know. And so I try to teach you what I can teach you because you're not gonna read the instructions. So you turn this on, you see a little flashy light. Did you see what just happened? Oh, that's kind of cool. It like yeah. slowly corrected the ailerons. Oh. Rudder's working. Yep. See how it's kind of like pulling funny? You see that, guys? That's the gyro trying to correct for environmental impact. Aileron, aileron, elevator, elevator. So when you pull back on this, here, why don't you show them from my side so they can kind of visualize it if you're flying. So this pulls the elevator up and it's proportional control. It's got expo in it, I can tell, because at the middle of the stick it barely moves, and then at the end it moves fully. Okay, then this is rudder. This is how I test things when I'm getting ready to fly. That one's kind of sticky. It's almost like it's stuck mm -hmm. on something. Of course, it's stuck in there, so you're not going to see it. You see the controller board? Can you give them a shot inside of there? Take that camera and stick it right up in there. Like this, guys. You see those servos? Hold it steady, hon. I mean, camera crew. Stop. See that? Okay. There's your elevator. Okay. So then this aileron is exposed, so you can see that working. But at this point, the plane is trying to rotate itself. It's like, that's not right. Okay, then there's the aerobatic mode, which means it's maybe not gonna do quite as much. And then right now we're in beginner, mid, and expert. So expert means there's no stabilization at all. Middle is gonna give you some level higher. And then beginner is gonna give you the most. I'm assuming it's gonna automatically level the plane. See how the ailerons try to bring it back to level? Because the air is flowing, it's gonna push the swing down. See, it's trying to bring it level. See, it's trying to bring it level with the elevator. Show them that. So it's trying to bring it, trying to bring it level. So it's pointed down. So it's going to bring it like this until it stops. Hmm. Okay. So when we go to mid, it's still doing the correction. When you go to expert, it doesn't correct, and there's no stabilization at all. So the difference between auto leveling and stabilization, of course, is that with stabilization, if the wind pushes the swing down, the ailerons are going to respond to counter that. With auto leveling it's gonna bring it back to neutral, okay? So it's very important that the home position is where you want it to be when you turn it on, okay? So now let's test throttle. All the way up, all the way down, and then it works. That's pretty cool, got, got a decent amount of power. Mm -hmm.
good good throttle control. Obviously, no control, no ground handling control at all because that that doesn't move. Okay. So if you wanted to, if you wanted that to work, you could just pull this out and then stick it into the tail. It's going to put a lot of load on the servo, just to give you an idea. I think we got to try it, but I don't want to try it with a smaller pack. So any ideas, camera crew? It's kind of like rainy and crappy, but I think we should try it anyway and just see how it is, like torture test style. She's cringing at me. <laughs> Let's pause it. We'll get another battery in here and we'll see how it does. Okay, folks, we charged this one and we got it up to 4.14. So we were reading the instruction manual. I know it's weird. And it said that it would take 3.5 hours to charge the batteries. I'm like, yeah, I'm not waiting that long. So we charged it on a proper charger and did it in about 15 minutes. So if but you're buying it for your kid for Christmas, maybe open, open it and, and charge plug, the battery. Yep, charge the batteries. It'd take forever. Yeah. Now, I, they said for safety reasons, don't charge it for more than four hours. I don't, I don't, that's pretty dumb. So you might <laughs> want to choose a better charger. So anyway, that all being understood, I wanted to talk to you quick before we get outside because the weather's crappy. Evidently when you press this button and it starts beep, 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 beep. When you move the stick, it's like flying a drone where it'll flip for you. It'll do aileron rolls or bear rolls, and then it'll do like, I guess, loops. We'll see how it does, but that's with the gyro in the beginner or mid position, but in expert, I don't know if it does anything. So the other thing is they say to fly for like uh, three to five seconds, uh, just straight with no wind or whatever for the gyro to you know, like auto learn its position. Mm. Um, so I don't know how well that's gonna work <laughs> if it's windy out. Let's show them the fan real quick just so they can see. When that fan spins like that, you're gonna have to get in a better position for my best. The that's window usually, is in the wrong spot. Usually not a good there. sign. That fan is not on. <laughs> that's just our, that's just uh, whatever wind. those wind indicators so, are. We'll see how this goes. Okay, so radio is off at the beginning. I'm gonna show you how to do this. You stick the, this is the P51 battery. This is a little bit lower charge than what you guys will do if you do the full three and a half hours or whatever they say. I find it really hard to believe it's going to take that long, by the way, guys. So it's awkward to reach, but you'll plug it in and then you'll tuck the wires gently down in. Okay, then you'll lock this in, fits very good. Then you'll turn on your transmitter. It's going to jump. Watch this. See how that just straight, straightened and that's just level. Mm -hmm. Now, in order to arm it, you have to go throttle all the way up and then throttle all the way down. Now it works, okay? So we'll just go ahead and go out and fly. Are you ready? I'm Today? ready. Are you sure you're ready, camera crew? Well, no, but. This is gonna be a really easy filming job. <laughs> all right, oh boy, it's cold. It's windy, it's wet, it's all the things you don't want when you're flying a new airplane, but we're going to do it for you, YouTube. So, I don't know which runway we're going to use. I think we'll just use this uh, taxiway here. Okay. So, we'll just go ahead and do this and hope for the best, guys. Whoa, 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 it didn't last long. Okay. Good thing they got you a spare prop. Yeah, no kidding. It didn't break the prop, though. And did you notice it veering crazily? Yeah. That, I don't think that was me. That, I think that was the wind. It just couldn't overwhelm it. So there's the wind. Whoa, buddy, that's really crappy. That thing, like I could not overwhelm the input. I think what I'm gonna do is, interestingly enough, it seems to not have sustained any damage except for the paint on the spinner, which I guess that's pretty reasonable. I think it's just a really, really, really bad trim on the rudder. So I'm just using my rudder trim here. You see what I'm talking about? Like, what the heck? I'm in beginner. Ooh. Yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> it's just veering like crazy. And it's really actually not all that windy. It's, eh, there's it's... a little bit of wind. Okay, guys, I'm gonna get serious about this. I'm attempting to bend the hollow fuselage I know, and you're probably thinking, that's crazy, Brian. No, it's really not. Because you got to get this thing to fly straight somehow. You see how bad it's yanking off mm -hmm. the side? 
Um, it's almost like it's correcting in the wrong direction. Okay, so yaw, yaw. Oh, it's correcting in the wrong direction. Do you see what's <laughs> happening? You see the rudder? When I move it, it goes the wrong direction. That's rather disappointing. So, even though I moved the rudder, what is, what have you decided to do now? Oh, that's the aileron. That's not the rudder. That's, that's the rudder. What the heck? Do you see what's going on there? That's the, that's not the rudder. This is the rudder. Maybe that's what's going on. So they're not tied to the right. Well, I don't know what the heck is going on. This is very weird. I got to take a look at this real quick. I'm pretty sure it's a mode two because didn't it move correctly inside just a few minutes ago? Because look. See, the problem is this thing, when I correct, when I move the tail this way, it's going to exacerbate that. So as mm -hmm. soon as the wind catches, it's going to go in a circle, which is what we're experiencing exactly. Now, if you were inverted, it would be still correcting the wrong direction. <laughs> what the heck? All right, we're going to try this again, guys. See, this is why you watch reviews on YouTube. <laughs> because then you can learn from our screw-ups, which I don't exactly know what they are right at the moment. But evidently, we did something wrong. Okay, so we're going to unplug this. We're gonna start with the transmitter on this time, just for fun. We're gonna plug in the battery and quickly bring it level. And we're gonna hold still. Nothing is happening yet. See those things? The air on's leveled. See the rudder moving now? What the heck? It's correcting the right direction now, look. See, what the heck was going on? I don't know what happened, guys, but I'll take it. I'm going to try this again. I bet it'll fly out okay now. So if you have a problem, unplug it and plug it back in. Just unplug it from the wall and plug <laughs> Wait it 10 back seconds. in. And plug then it it's an airplane. We'll restart your computer. <laughs> I don't know what the heck happened there. I don't know either. They're Chinese, they got some interrupting ideas. Hey, look at that. That's pretty good. Wow, it flies actually hey, pretty good. Yeah. Surprisingly stable. Oh, it looks good. In the, it looks good in the air. I'm at 50% throttle. What the heck was going on earlier? <laughs> that was so weird. I am giving it yaw and it's yawing. I love it. Nice and level. Very tight. 30% throttle. 40, 50. There's 100% throttle. Doesn't want to do a loop because I'm not in expert mode. Now let's show them what the stupid button does. Button. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So even, even in a mode where you can't generally tip the aircraft over, it'll do the trick. So now let's do an elevator. Oh, I tried, but not enough throttle. It still did it. That is pretty cool, actually, for kids that wouldn't, try, wouldn't know how to do it. Try it again, because it's having a hard time focusing with the okay. gray. Ooh, sorry. I'll bring it over here a little closer. Okay, guys, we'll do a roll first. Full throttle, button, roll. Oh, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah. I am really surprised. I mean, once we got through that totally bizarre, weird setup where it like started working in opposite directions. Okay, so now we're gonna come back. We'll do another pass. We'll do the roll the other direction. Okay, remember, get your throttle up and then button the other way. Oh, that is so cool, guys. And I fly these things a lot. Okay, so full throttle, button back on the stick. Oh, I did a loop. That's pretty cool. Let's see what happens when we do it the other way. <laughs> it says no. <laughs> Oh, the Chinese got something right. Okay, out of out of the uh, stabilization, I just want to see how this thing flies without it. Okay. Ooh, she gets kicked around by the wind a lot. But it's flying decent. I'm going to go to mid. Okay. All right, I'm in mid now, which I'm assuming no auto leveling. No, it's still auto levels. But I don't think it's going to give me limited bank angles. Let's try this. Yep, you can do loops and everything, but it's still auto levels, okay? Do you see what's going on, guys? So in the middle setting, I'm gonna bring it down so we can see it. 40% throttle, whoa, whoa, I don't know what that was, but it was crazy. <laughs> you guys see it yawing? That's my input. I love that it actually lets you yaw the airplane. Normally these stabilizers on these Chinese aircraft stop the yaw effect. Well, if you want a coordinated turn, you have to have yaw. Um, other than, whoa! 
other than that crazy thing at the beginning, it's like really a good flying plane. I'm super surprised. I'm in the mid mode now, so I can do loops and I can control how big they are. And I can do, I don't know if I can do barrel rolls though. Nope, I can't overwhelm it enough. It just stops, it just stops turning. So if you wanna do a barrel roll yourself, you gotta to go to expert. So I'll show you how to do that. So you go to expert and then you have to roll it. You give a little rudder and a little elevator or excuse me, a little rudder and a little aileron and you can go all the way around really quick. And if you wanna go slow, you gotta get a lot of airspeed. There it is. And then into safe or beginner mode. And I've got the throttle pretty low. Oh, that is so cool. <laughs> I'm really surprised by how good this thing flies, guys. Okay, let's go over here to the edge. Let's just show them what it looks like over against the tree line. The I hope the gray, focus isn't going to yeah, be horrific. The gray is kind of. I know. I'm me. sorry, guys. That's not the plane's fault. No, you want to go to your right, please. Like over toward the house, please. Thank you. Boy, that stabilization, that auto leveling is just like really fierce. That's why it never banks quite enough. You really got to stick that stick over to get it to bank. And it looks like it does a little bit of coordination for you automatically, which is pretty cool. Are we getting better focus now? Yeah, it is a little bit over here. Okay, I'm at like 30% power. I'm having to overwhelm a little bit of wind, folks. This thing would fly slower, but not living room slow. Nope. Which is sad. I was really excited to <laughs> about the prospect of that. Let's try to, let's do a couple of landings on the main runway. It does kind of drive around like a car a little bit, guys. So if you've got kids you're buying this for, um, if it doesn't do weird things, it's pretty cool. Definitely not like a 3D plane or anything. It is a brushed motor almost certainly here. I'm obviously out of the uh, stabilization or the safe. Uh, you could get into trouble with that thing. It's pretty touchy. And those of you who've watched my channel know I fly with Astriax or stabilization pretty much all the time. Okay, let's try to do a landing, hon. You want to come up here to the runway, please? Okay, you ready? Here we go. Here we go. Let's try it. Out of the throttle. Oh, man, that is pretty yeah. awesome for a little plane. All right, let's take off again. The other thing I notice is that the auto leveling really, 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 really wants to kick that prop into the ground. So don't be surprised if you damage your props. Let's show them a hand launch after we land here. Man, that stabilizer is very good for being an airplane and a cheap airplane. I mean, this thing is cheap, guys. Let's just get right down to it. It's cheap. Okay, there is no throttle cut, so the throttle cut's not on. Now, I, I could pull the gear for this, too. Why don't we do that? Let's see how it handles that. It's cold out here, guys. Yes. It's Chile. So once you get it lifted a little bit, you can spin it if you want, and it'll help pull it out without damaging your foam. Problem is I'm having a hard time getting it lifted out of that one initial position. You guys see what I'm doing there? I'm just trying to wiggle it so it doesn't break the foam because there ain't nothing worse than a broken foam wing. You can fix it with CA, but it's just going to get heavy quick. Oh, man, that's, that looks a lot cooler without the gear. Wind's coming from that direction now all of a sudden. So throttle. That's even slower on the throttle, guys. Look, we're about 50% throttle there. Bringing in right overhead, hon. <laughs> that was cool. A little close. <laughs> was that close for comfort? <laughs> I didn't run into you this time. Nope. True. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna do a trick with this. We'll do the uh, acrobat button. Here we go, acrobat button down. Oh, that's pretty cool. I mean, I we were making fun of it earlier when we were off camera about how stupid that was. And actually, to be honest with you, it's, it's pretty cool. It's fun. I mean, these little planes, let's get real. This isn't exactly like a, you know, 1.2 meter warbird or, uh, you know, some thousand dollar radio controlled aircraft. It costs less than $50 shipped. I mean, seriously? What do you guys want? <laughs> this is so cool. I would have killed for something like this as a kid. Oh, it's so neat. 
and it, it really the scale appearance is not perfect but it's pretty good and and the problem is you get to scale and then the next thing you know is you can't translate that size and you'll notice it's flying really quick I would be able to fly a lot slower if it weren't so windy but when you got wind you got to fly a little quicker oh losing battery I think maybe hmm. yeah we might be Something let's changed. see if I can catch it coming out of the throttle a little bit of throttle out of the throttle in the throttle out of the throttle oh, oh. so close Oh, this thing is really fun and cool. Speaking of cool, let's try catching it. Sorry, camera crew. She was all excited. She had her finger ready to stop I know. it. She was like, finally, I can come out of the freezer. All right, guys, one more catch. Here we go. Out of the throttle. Elevator. Okay, a little bit of throttle. A little bit of throttle. Out of it. Ah! One more time. And folks, if you're worried about your kids chopping your fingers off or chopping their fingers off, I wouldn't worry too much. You could probably stop it with your finger and it wouldn't even hurt. Unless unless you got a kid's finger, then it might hurt. You know, like you would think that they just died except they don't even have a mark on their skin. <laughs> This is a touchdown. Wait, wrong sport. <laughs> this thing is cool, guys. Cheap, uh, works. I don't know what the heck happened over there, but if it happens to you, now you know how to fix it. I think what we might have done wrong, and it's probably like spelled out in Chinglish somewhere in the manual, is we plugged the battery in and we must have waited too long. Get it flipped over quick. Then turn this thing on. Don't forget to keep your wife's hands warm when she's filming because she's going to try to <laughs> take me out for making her film this today but this is cool fun thanks for watching guys go buy one links in the description batteries if i can find them i'll put them in the description if not uh just look harder thanks guys